Uh, hi guys, so I'm going to read um, the Submariner story, the Namor story um, from Marvel Comics number two. So, The Submariner by Bill Everett. The Submariner, young prince of that odd race of amphibians, lives on land, sea, and in the air. He ventures for the first time to America to wage a war of espionage against the white man. Um, Namor dives from a stolen plane. Along uncharted lanes through the subsea, he spurts. Um, what's his destination? Rising suddenly to the surface, he gazes spellbound at New York City's skyline. Cautiously, he swims about the harbor, investigating. Puzzled, he views the docks and looks with wonder at a highly illumined, solid-looking building at the water's edge. As he slowly treads water, he suddenly feels himself being sucked down and forward faster and faster toward the building. Um, with superhuman strength, Namor fights the irresistible current, but to no avail. He is pulled rapidly into a great tube. Dazed, Namor continues to struggle violently. With semi-conscious logic, he stretches against or his huge arms, bracing them against the walls of the tube. Straining, he changes position, and with a terrific shove, he's through. A geyser of water bursts into the power hose under the submar Submariner's gigantic push. Panic spreads through the powerhouse. Valves are hurriedly turned to stop the rush of water. And cat catapulted high into the girders, Namor looks down on, on the scene of excitement. Look, who's that? What's he doing up there? Frightened by the, their discovery of him, he gets to his feet, but trips on a live wire. The shock infuriates him. Men, by this, thinking it was one of the engineer's tricks to destroy him, he rips a girder from its rivets and hurls it with gigantic force to the startled crowd below him. Girder upon girder, Namor hurls at the machinery and the engineers below him, wreaking te terrible havoc. Faster and faster, his great strength demolishes the plant. Then abruptly, he stops and dives through a window just as the roof caves in. Soaring above the city, he flies over a park, Central Park, and spots a body of water. Desiring to be in his natural element again, he drops with the speed of a bullet. Bree, bree. But the alarm is out. All over the city, sirens are screaming. On the lake shore, a patrolman sees Namor plunge into the water. He whistles. Namor disregards the warning and draws fire from the policemen. Bullets wang out over the water and ricochet on the surface. Namor dives below, but is curious about the little pellets that come so swiftly from shore. With amazing speed, he reaches into the air and stops a thirty-eight caliber bullet. Uh, below surface again, he examines a little piece of lead, amused at the thought that such an infinitesimal pebble could hope to harm him. Um, then with fierce, sudden anger, he seizes, he seizes the rowboat containing policeman and oarsman and capsizes it. Like a flash, he breaks through the surface and rockets high in the air, headed for a group or trees bordering Fifth Avenue. I don't think Namor is like spoken yet in this issue. He hasn't said a word or never mind. Soaring beyond the avenue, he comes to the East River and drops unobtrusively into it. Coming to an epicheture in the sea wall, he hoists himself up to it to find himself in a sewer outlet. Proceeding inward, he enters a labyrinth of sewage tunnels and uh, comes upon a pensive tramp. Howdy, Tarzan, what brings you here? I fail to see why that's any business of yours. Ah, uh, come on, champ, or come now, champ. Don't get tough about it. Who do you think ye are? Never mind that, just be quiet and do as I say. Take off those clothes. <laughs> sure, sure, pal. Uh, 
Yeah, that's weird. Anyway, so some 20 minutes later, arrayed in the unfortunate tramp's garments, Namor searches for an exit. He walks several blocks and sees light coming from above. He climbs a narrow steel ladder and pushes upward in a manhole cover, emerging in the middle of Fifth Avenue. Speeding across the street, he miraculously escapes disaster and avoids the attention of the police. Down a side street, he runs. Realizing his need for more suitable clothing, he chooses a, a likely-looking house in the 80s. Um, are they talking about the 1880s? This, this comic's really old. This, this comic's almost 100 years old, actually. It's uh, This video is made in 2023. Uh, it be 10, 13, yeah, 16 years, or, yeah, 16 minus, or 100 minus 16, uh, 9, or 86 years, maybe, I don't know, my math is terrible, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at math, anyway, what is your master in? I must see your master at once. But I say, you can't use this door. The service entrance, sir, is for the likes of you. I must ask you to leave immediately. Let him come in, Pinkerton. He looks all right. Pinkerton, my dress, help. Or so, er, then suddenly as the cigarette touches your skirt. Amor, never having con uh, come into contact with fire in his undersea existence, doesn't realize its danger. He leaps. Um, and as he reaches the fainting girl, his own clothes are enveloped by flame. But uncannily, the heat brings forth stored up water into his system, and his entire body acts as a sprinkler. Water sports from his pores and drenches both himself and the unconscious girl. Good grief, sir. What happened? Where did the water come from? This is no time for questions, stupid. This woman needs medical attention. Call a physician. While Pinkerton telephones, Namor discards his wet clothing and wraps himself in a silk curtain. I must not be found here when the servant returns. But there is something about this, this girl. I do not like to leave her. Yet I must. The butler is coming. I shall return later. There are riches to be found in this house. I don't know, though. A second thought, I want that girl. Namor leaps to the front of the building, where he sees attendants carrying the girl into the street. He drives on top of the ambulance, where he crouches as it races through the traffic, sirens screaming. People sure get excited over an accident, though they, Tom. Do they, Tom? You said it. Hey, officer, look. Breed. So, accident ward, emergency entrance. Uh, let's say Bell Delview Hospital. Say, Doc, did you see something dark flash over us when we drove up here? Nonsense, nonsense, Tom. You've been seeing things. Stand quietly, everyone, or I shall kill you all. Hey, I said quietly, you fool. Oh, Tom. That will ensure you're being quiet for a while. This girl will be useful to me in my crusade against you murderous Americans. Namor, not realizing that the American girl cannot live underwater, speeds with her through the air to the waterfront. Death's folly. The imbeciles have seen me. I have been careless. Look, a man flying in the sky. He's carrying something. And he's heading south. From the hospital, the alarm is out. Once again, police cars and motorcycles roar through the city. They follow the demon Submariner's sky trail to New York's Battery. On a lonely dock near the Battery, Namor's colossal strength absorbs the shock. There is not much time. I hear the police coming. There he is, Sarge. We've got him now. It's that nut that wrecked the power plant, Sarge. Let him have it. But be careful of the girl. Bah, fools. Don't you know that your measly little pellets only tickle me? The, their bullets merely mashing against the submariner's alligator-tough flesh. 
the cordon of police fell, falls back astounded. With a surge of maniacal fury, Namor straight arms the stunned policeman and makes for the nearest car. As if for but a toy, he picks it up and hurls it at the alarm officers, killing them and scattering them about. Yeah, Namor's a pretty bad guy. Or well, he doesn't understand a lot of stuff, though, at this point. But this is his very early. This is when he first encountered humans. But once again, Namor seizes the unconscious girl. But two officers who escape the fate of the others arise from the wreck. Namor leaps from the dock. The cops, still groggy, follow courageously. Namor releases the girl and turns to meet his assailant. The second cop drives, dives for the drowning girl. With ease, the submariner does away with his opponent and looks about for the girl. But she is on her way to safety in the arms of an almost exhausted policeman. Thank heaven you got here, Lieutenant. I'm afraid we lost Foley, but we can still save the girl. It's positively uncanny about that lunatic. What is he anyway? He lives in the water like a fish flies, like a bird. Um, and it has the strength of a hundred elephants. And so, only a few bubbles in the water surface show where the submariner was last seen. Where will he turn up next? And will he continue his evil deeds? Watch for the next episode. So yeah, that's the end of that, um, comic, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, if you can, like, comment, or subscribe, it'd be appreciated. If you guys want me to read a specific comic, that'd be cool. Like, if just a specific comic, just let me know back down in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys later.